Hello everybody, this is a table. It's clean because I ran a hoover over it before we begun. I've been doing a lot of that. Hello, yes, and welcome back to the table of whatever this is. I've just noticed I need to give Pidge some more water. I'll do that later. Well, today we're going to be looking at a video camera. But if you've looked it up, you already know what it is. Yes, it's definitely this Sony. Yes. Yes, hang on a minute. It's definitely, it's a Sony. It's definitely a Sony. It, it's 100% a Sony. Sony. It really is, yes, because, you know, only a Sony would come in a Sony box, right? Nobody would ever repurpose a Sony box and put a different... Oh. Yes, we're not looking at a Sony today because, unfortunately, this camera didn't work when it arrived. Although I was expecting that, I naturally only wanted the box for repurposing for a camera that I liked because today we're looking at a... Oh, God, I'm going to butcher this, aren't I? Today we're looking at the Hiachi Color Video Camera VKC600, which is this beautiful device you can see in my hands right here. Looks very camera-y and it's got a cable coming out the back because this is the first one of these that we've looked at. Yes, now, of course, as well, you've got to extend that forward because it looks awesome. Now, it's, uh, we'll... Well, we'll just do the roundabout and I'll talk about the camera for a bit and uh, the other bits and pieces. But um, first on the bottom, we've got the information from the camera itself, power supply, uh, serial number, make, etc. It's actually the C600E and a tripod mount. However, of course, being an old camera of the day, uh, if you weren't going to use a tripod, then you used a handle, which you'd screw in like this. And then you've got a handle camera, which is uh, a definitely interesting one with a strap you should certainly use. Coming around the front, it's got a very standard lens. Uh, it's not an autofocus lens. It does have a zoom button up here. I'm going to actually take this. <laughs> I know I'll just put it back on. I'm going to take it off so I can get the whole thing in frame. It's got uh, your standard zoom buttons for wide photo and telephoto, I think is what they stand for. I looked it up. Uh, it does have a macro function here, but uh, didn't use that much. And manual focus, something I am somewhat inexperienced with. On the main body here, we've once again got the lovely labelling. We've got uh, standby and normal, so this thing doesn't have its own battery. It runs off another device's battery, so when you're not using it, you're supposed to put it in standby mode to save battery. Normal and backlight, not 100% sure what these do. Don't really care, if I'm honest with you. White balance, this is important and something I'm inexperienced with. But uh, you have to set the white balance, and when you're looking through the viewfinder, if you push the button, it'll give you an indication on the white balance, and you have to twist it until it turns green. You'll see uh, the difference that having the wrong white balance will make in video footage later on. Moving on to the back, we've got your standard viewfinder, which, uh, yep, it's got four lights in there. For V is for record, L is light, low and high, B, I don't know, and W is your white balance. We'll have a look at that when I power this thing on. And here we have, well, actually, we've got a couple of instructions. Ah, V is for VTR run, B is for bat entry. So the battery is empty, that's it. L is low light, and W is adjust the white balance. Thank you, instruction manual. Do not point camera at extreme light, such as the sun on my face. Do not expose to extreme heat. Hmm, I'm too hot for this. Sensitivity, uh, if you're indoors and the light is bad, flick that to high and you get a lot more power. And these are the uh, controls, VTR controls. So do you set... It recording from the VTR or the camera. Select camera all the time, otherwise the button down here does not work. And that's the roll around of the whole thing. Nice and simple. It's a very basic camera. Oh, there's a microphone jack there. But what is a VTR? Well, we covered this before when we looked at the um, the Panasonic NV... Uh, not the NV. WVP35. A VTR is a separate camcorder a VHS device that you plug the camera into with this lovely battery, which I say costs more than the camera and the VTR combined. Finding a working VTR straight out the bat is actually pretty bloody difficult, and I got very lucky with this one. I don't even remember where this one came from. I think it was a random purchase of eBay, but it's like the sixth one I've owned, and it's the only one that reliably works. What we do is you take this cable, which comes out the back of the camera, which is, oh god, is that a 12-pin? Uh, no, it's a 10-pin. Uh, 12 pins are the ones that normally go into the cameras when they're not affixed, and 10 pins are the ones that come out. So it's a 10 pin camera, uh, and you take that and you plug it oh, into the side of the VTR. This VTR is also how I get video out onto my computer. So uh, it goes in this way. I'm going to swap hands around. 
this adapter. I've, I've got to find a specific adapter because I brought a Sony, I think it's a Triton, um, and I don't have a VTR that will run it. Plug that in, make sure the tracking is central because that tracking screws everything up. Right, and... Uh, oh dear. Now, there's not a tape in here, and I haven't got one nearby I can use, unfortunately. So, um, we're a bit buggered in that phase, so we can't do any test recording, but... Flick it on. That's now on. Now, normally, you just press record and play, and that would set it up. But as I said, I've not got a tape. I might go grab one off camera quickly. But if we bring the camera around... Oh, what's it doing? Now, I've got it set on standby, so I'll take it off standby. And the screen is on. Oh. oh dear. Dropping everything. Dropping everything. I am well organised. And here's our VTR screen. It's looking a bit liney. Are we zoomed in? I think we are. There we go. So we're zooming out now. So there you go. You can see through the viewfinder and obviously you, you, know, you have to twist to do the manual focus. The viewfinder, as you'd expect from a screen from this era, is not particularly clear. It's not fantastic, but it's, it's passable. I found it quite hard to figure out when I was actually focused on things. Now, if I push the uh, white button balance, you'll see that's red, right? So it's my job now to twist it to green. So now it's pushed. The gray and white balance is now set correctly. But if I twist it back, red green so you obviously want that white balance to be green uh, when you're filming and again you'll see why when it rolls around but yeah basically what you do is you press record and play on here and then once it's going you press the uh, the green button it's actually kind of funny because that green light comes on when it's not recording so if it's on it means it's recording it's something i found but yeah uh, that's the quick look over of this particular camcorder it didn't take long there's not much to it to be fair but um yeah, that's a quick look over. So we're now going to move on to the next part of the video, which, of course, is the video footage, something I enjoy doing greatly, as I'm sure you're well aware. Now, as you know, I normally go to Tropical Birdland on this one uh, because the one bird in the background isn't enough. Hello, Pidge. Uh, but I'm going to prefix this to say that some of the footage is a bit naff because I didn't know how to use the camera and I did not have the instruction manual when it came to actually using it. So inexperience has taken over and kind of done a lot there but once i got used to it you see some of the footage from when i got it good so that's just the prefix some of the footage is really bad but hang on some of it is better so yes enough talking let's go and see what kind of video this camera from 1981 can produce
How are you doing?
And so, there we have it. You saw the video footage at the beginning before I understood the white balancing problems. Uh, it was very dark and very green. The light obviously wasn't set. The camera soft is in the way you'd expect when it comes to pointing uh, with a bright background. Uh, it, it just doesn't work. Uh, which can make some particular shots difficult, but when you get the lighting just right, oh boy, does it look good. Um, that military macaw, the green, which um, the green bird eating the nut, where the colours really came out. I was so impressed with the capabilities of this camera considering its age and the fact it relies on a secondary piece of technology that runs on this particular format. This was a Bambi tape. It is now tropical bird land. Mm, it'll have some other footage on there eventually. Uh, but I was really impressed with this camera to the point where there's a reason it's being given a box rather than just sitting loose like some of the other cameras that I own. But yeah, at the end of the day, a very good camera. I was surprised at the quality that it was able to put out. I rather enjoyed using it, although I did find with the VTR and the holding, especially with the strap, it's a little bit awkward, although you do want to wear the strap in case you drop the damn thing. Uh, made in Japan, isn't that glorious? I did find it a little heavy and a little awkward to use, and I found some of the uh, holding it steady quite difficult. Uh, the microphone is a front-facing directional microphone, so it's sort of, you know, it's sides and forwards, but not back, so you can't really hear what the person using the camera is saying, although I suppose that's what the extra microphone is for. Both a good thing and a bad thing, but it does tend to pick up quite a lot when you're um, fiddling with the focus, and that noise when you're zooming in and out is very, very noticeable on the microphone. So that's one downside to it. However, there is only so much that you can expect from a camera from this particular time period. Um, and it's, oh gosh, this is, I'm about to show my inexperience with this. This is a tube-based camera, and I don't quite know the difference between tube and CCD, but I know some folks on Reddit who will know the difference, and I should really ask them so I can explain it for next time. Basically, I think tubes are something to do with, like, the way TVs work, and CCD is basically a chip that processes stuff. Not 100% sure, don't really care right now, but at the end of the day, yes. The Hiachi, probably butchered that. Color video camera, VK C600E is a good camera, and if you can get your hands on a working VTR, this is a Panasonic NV100, my next goal is a Panasonic NV200, because I prefer the VHS Type-C format. Good luck with that bloody thing. If you can get a working one of these, and you can get your hands on this camcorder cheap, and this camera cost me £3.70, pence, not including shipping, it was about a tenner with shipping altogether, but if you can get one on the cheap that works, and you're, you're interested in the old cameras, and you want to have a go with a uh, you know, a manual focus, older camera that requires some manual input, go for it. You can't go wrong with it, because if you get it right, you get some really nice video footage. Woo. Anyway, I do rather hope that you've enjoyed this video and this quick look over of this camera. That's obviously so out of date, it's ridiculously unreal, but I'll be using for other purposes down the line. Woo, game shows. Um, if you did enjoy that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think. Did you use a camera like this back in the day? You know, did you fancy it? Did you dislike it? How much were these back in the day? Does anybody know? Because I bloody don't. And I will see you next week. I'm about to go and film, I think it's two more of these damn cameras. Yeah, pretty sure it's two more cameras. Bye!